In this video, we're going to look at Enterprise Products. This is a midstream natural gas and crude oil pipeline company headquartered in Houston, Texas. Midstream refers to points in the oil production process that fall between upstream and downstream. More specifically, midstream activities include the storage, processing, and transportation of petroleum. What I do in my videos is I run my discounted cash flow model to figure out the true value of a company's stock. Then I look at the financial ratios of that company and compare them to its competitors. And I do this with you throughout the entire video so it's like we're doing it together. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $40.7 billion. So it's a good sized company. And they're trading at 1863. So that's one share of stock. And now we're going to pull the free cash flows. And free cash flow is the cash that's remaining after operating a business minus capital expenditures. Capital expenditures include property, plan, and equipment. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. And that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. Now I'm pulling the net income, which is a profit and loss on the income statement. And then we're going to pull the revenue, which is also on the income statement, and that's the sales for the company. Let's take a quick look at the numbers. Their free cash flow seems to be improving every year. It goes from $1 billion up to $2 billion. So that's a good sign they're really growing their business. Net income also increases every year. Revenue increased nicely from 2016 to 2018, but then dropped in 2019. I suspect it's going to drop again in 2020 with the low oil prices. Let's look at the capital structure of the company so we know what to discount the future cash flows by. They pay $1.1 billion of interest on their debt, and that's on the income statement. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to the liability section. Current debt of $2 billion, that's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of $26 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. They pay 4% interest on their debt. According to the income statement, they don't pay taxes, so that's the cost of debt, 4%. Let's get the cost of equity. We need the beta for that, and the beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a beta of 1.38, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market but it's not too volatile. A beta above two is considered volatile. Let's also go back to that balance sheet to get their current assets, because we need this number to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets mainly consist of cash accounts, receivables, and inventory. And we also need their current liabilities, which is how much money the company owes within the next 12 months. And that's $9 billion. And the equity, that's total assets minus total liabilities. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. And it's zero. So they have no equity in their capital structure, which means their liabilities equal their assets. That's not a good thing. You generally want a company with positive equity. Let's go back to their income statement to get their earnings before interest and taxes. That's called operating income on the income statement. That's five and a half billion dollars. Let's look at a capital structure. So they're 100% debt, so the cost of debt is 4.01%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows, 4.01%. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital, and we get a value of the company of $46 billion. We divide that number by 2.2 billion shares outstanding, and we get an intrinsic stock price of $21. They're trading at $19, so they're trading at a 12% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street values them at $20, so they're also valuing them at a buy, a little less than I am though. Let's look where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it was trading much higher for a while, close to $30. But then it's dropped quite a bit, and it's come up a little, then dropped again. So this could be a risky company to invest in because of the low oil prices. Some companies in this industry are going bankrupt because they just can't pay the interest on their debt. Let's look at the financial ratios of the company to get more information. 
They have a great PE 8.9, that's price of stock 1863 over earnings per share 210. To get earnings per share, that's net income 4.6 billion over shares outstanding 2.2 billion. So that means investors are willing to pay $9 for $1 of earnings. Below 15 is considered a good PE ratio, but you always want to compare it to similar companies just to make sure. They have a price to sales ratio of 1.2, that's a great price to sales ratio, that's stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue of 33 billion over shares outstanding, that comes up to 1501. They don't have a price to book ratio because they have no equity. Their current ratio is below 1, it's 0.9, that's current assets 7.8 billion over current liabilities. I suspect with low oil prices, they're not doing a good job of building their asset base to cover their liabilities. Let's look at the interest coverage ratio, that's 5, so that's good. They can cover their interest payment 5 times. The calculation is EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, of 5.5 billion over interest expense. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done a video on Enbridge, which is a Canadian company. I also did Frontline, MPLX, One Oak, and Plains. And all these companies are in the same industry as EPD. Let's compare EPD to the other companies. If EPD is in green, that means their ratio is better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better than the average in price to earnings, price to sales, which is great. They're 100% debt, which is an issue. That's why they don't have price to book ratio. The more debt you take on, you can improve your PE and price to sales ratio. So you also have to look at debt and kind of weigh the two. The current ratio is above the average, even though it's below one, because the average company is 0.7. Every company is below one, but this could be a timing issue. And possibly in the following quarters, this ratio will get fixed. They don't have an ROE because they have no equity. The best is One Oak at 21%. They're 100% debt, like Plains and MPLX. Enterprise is the largest U.S. company in terms of market cap at $40 billion. Enbridge, when I convert their market cap to U.S. dollars, is $62 billion U.S. dollars. So they're larger than all the U.S. companies. Generally, the larger the company, the easier it is to obtain funding from banks to, in order to keep running your business through difficult times like coronavirus and low oil prices. So let me know what you think of the video. Thanks for watching.